Hey, good morning. Good morning, Impact. How is everybody doing? Come on now. I am uh, I'm so excited. We are in the holiday seasons, are we not? But, but we are also in the house of the Lord today. And in our devotional that I sent out uh, this morning to, to, every, well, to a lot of you guys in this room, um, one of my favorite verses in the whole Bible is, is this verse from Isaiah. Isaiah 55, 8 through 9. And we're in the house of the Lord. And when we walk through these doors and come into his sanctuary, I want my prayer and my hope for you today is your thoughts become his thoughts. Your worries leave. And you don't have to think about that for the next hour, hour and a half, whatever. And you just stay in his presence. Amen? Because Isaiah says, my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways. This is God speaking to Isaiah. He says, my thoughts are not your thoughts, and neither are your ways my ways. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways and, and thoughts higher than yours. So as we go into worship, I want you to stand. I want you to clap. I want you to get into his presence and worship with him, knowing and put your thoughts. His thoughts. Let him, his Holy Spirit work on you. Amen. Father God, as we go to worship you, Lord, just let your spirit move in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Man, we got such a special day planned for you guys. Actually, not just today, but the next uh, three weeks. Just so you guys know, Impact will be sh shut down for two weeks at the end of the month. Okay. Park District shut down. So we have to shut down. But that doesn't mean we don't go to church. That doesn't mean you don't go spend time in the house of the Lord. I actually, uh, I have an assignment for the church. I want you to go to another church. I want you to go check out another experience and come back and say, Pastor, man, they did this, they did that. I love this. I hated that. I want you to tell me about your experience in, in the house of the Lord. Amen? So your pastor's actually giving you permission to go see another church. I want you to. I want you to hear the gospel. Just because we're, we're, the church isn't closed down, just impacted. And we're just a small por portion of the kingdom, amen? But we have some special guests here with us today, and I would like them all to stand up and come here all at once. Social distance, right on top of each other. I'm just kidding. Here, you guys can spread out right here. Come on. So, huh? Yeah, no, I got one. Can you guys mind sh sharing one mic? Uh, actually, I forgot we were on camera, so just get close. No social distance. So, does anybody know who these people are? If you do, who? Chi Alpha. Chi Alpha's been with us from the beginning. Yeah, you can give it up to them. They, who Chi Alpha is and what they do is they go on to college campuses and they find individuals that are seeking the Lord. Am I right? And you guys do that through lots of different programs. So I'm going to let them speak and introduce themselves. And let uh, we know a bunch of them, but we, we have some newcomers up here. No, a couple minutes go. Don't worry. Just go. You go. Okay. Is this on? Here. Okay. Well, hello, Impact. How are you guys? Hello. My name is Taylor, and I serve at UIC's campus. That's Chicago's largest um, public university with 33,000 students. And when we say that we're missionaries, we are domestic missionaries to the campus. That is our mission field. And one of the things I love the most about UIC is that the world gets to come to us. And a part of our ministry are people from India, people from Pakistan, people from Paraguay, people from Nigeria. The world gets to come to us and we get to share with them the love of Jesus. So a little update about my ministry. We are domestic missionaries, but I have the privilege this winter in a little under two weeks to go to Japan. I'm going to the largest city in the world. It's Tokyo, where there's only 1% Christian. Only 1% of people have accepted Jesus into their lives. Wow. And so I get to share with them the reason for the season for Christmas. I get to share with them the gospel. I get to make new friends and teach them all about who Jesus is. But I want to teach you guys something um, just really quick. Are you guys ready to learn some Japanese? Yeah. Susie, okay, okay. So just repeat after me. It's very short. Okay. Kami sama wa? Anata o? Aishitemasu. 
and that's God loves you. All right, well, thank you. <laughs> hey, what's up? Uh, I'll just introduce myself, and I'll let you guys share more cool stuff. But my name is Luke, and my wife and I, our kids are sick because every kid, everyone's kids are sick right now, essentially, in the world, I guess, or, or in uh, places where it's cold. Tis the season. Um, but we're at serving at Loyola, and we love Impact Church. Thanks so much for helping us do what we do and getting to serve. We like to call um, the university campus the world's most strategic mission field because, like Taylor said, it's like people are coming from all over the world, and they're making those decisions that are going to impact their future. And so thanks for letting us do what we do. We love it, and, uh, and we love you guys as well. Good morning, my name is Ted. I'm a sophomore student at Loyola. Um, I, moved, yeah, I moved across the country. Um, I first met Luke and started getting discipled by him and was part of his uh, guy small group. And then this year I started leading my own small group. So I'm considered. So this is the one that's in the emails? Uh, that you mentioned Ted before? Yes. Probably. Dude, what's up, man? <laughs> I, I didn't even put two to two together. Thank Here, you for I'll, coming, uh, brother. I'll clarify. So we send out uh, emails sometimes. And I mean, obviously, if you want to get one of our, like, email updates, you can. Yeah, we like to tell those stories about what's happening. I've probably mentioned stuff like Ted and how he's reaching guys on the campus, making an impact for Jesus on the campus. So, yes, the real people, the real stories. And, uh, and yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Good morning, everyone. So if you guys know me, my name is Justin. Uh, I have the honor and privilege of serving with, this is not even all of our team, this is half of our team, um, but we just want to say on behalf of Chicago Chi Alpha, thank you for supporting us. Um, but I'm directing at Columbia College. It's my first year directing. Um, and I think the biggest thing is just that uh, going through new director training, I'm so grateful for our national Chi Alpha team because you can only uh, disciple people as much as you know. Um, but you can only lead as far as you've gone, right? So taking the next several months, uh, a year in total of going through training. Um, but I wanted it to be less about us, but at Columbia College, do people know where Columbia is at? Columbia College? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right downtown in the heart of Chicago. Uh, so it's great doing discipleship in dorm where you can literally look out the window in the Sears Tower. Yes, Sears Tower, I will say the Sears Tower. Uh, it's right there. So 7,000 students, it's an art school, uh, very, heavy in the LGBTQ community, but we just want to love the campus and love the city with the gospel. And um, before I pass along, I want to introduce some new staff member to our team at Columbia that is standing to my left. So I'll let them introduce. Yeah. Uh, so yes, like Justin said, we are uh, new to his team. Um, this is our third year in Chicago though. Uh, we were with Taylor before at UIC and just this year, we were invited to join Justin um, on the team at Columbia. And What's your name? Oh, I am so sorry. I, thank you. I forget that sometimes. Um, but we are the Hansons, Natalie and I. Uh, so Jeremy. that's Natalie and I'm Jeremy. <laughs> this is baby Judah. He's not going to say anything. I'm sorry. But uh, yeah, so we're from Indiana. And we were in Kyle for there and came here to Chicago and have loved it ever since. And Natalie's going to give a quick story, though. Yeah, I just wanted to share a quick testimony with you. Um, so we have this thing called Fall Retreat in uh, September, and one of our students um, came and he invited um, another girl. Her name is Jocelyn. He invited her to our um, our week our weekly large group gathering thermostat, and um, that's how I met her. And then she ended up coming to Fall Retreat, um, and I didn't know her very well until then. And there was this time of like ministry and um, she opened up to me about her life and like how she was really uh, dealing with like depression and anxiety and how like growing up she had a really abusive um, childhood and her um, a really bad relationship with her mother and everything um, and I was just able to pray with her and speak into her life about that and just let her know that you know just because her her mother made her feel a certain way. It doesn't have anything to do with her um, and her worth. Um, and she also just like really struggled with bad thoughts and getting thoughts like that she should hurt herself or like she should end her life. Um, and then I've just been able to meet with her on a weekly basis and speak into that. And uh, just a couple Fridays ago, or maybe a month ago actually, 
um, she made the decision to get baptized, which was awesome. And she's just, she's so hungry for the Lord, like, it's amazing. And uh, we're going to start, like, going through some discipleship material, and it's going to be really awesome. So pray for Jocelyn. Hi, I'm Becky Nelson, and I've known you guys for a little while. Um, I'm in four and a half years in in Chicago, but I moved here from Texas, Chi Alpha. And um, yeah, things are going well. You heard a lot of stories. And I just want to say thank you guys for your faithfulness. It makes an impact for us as, as people and families, and it makes an impact on the campuses. And um, just to encourage you that there are students who are just awakening to the presence of the Lord that he's chasing them, he's the one doing this. You know, one plants, one waters, but God gets the glory. And um, there are people who are just awakening, awakening to start reading the Bible. They may have been in church their whole life, but have never read the Bible. And so we're starting chapter by chapter. <laughs> what does it mean? And it's so much better than what you think it is. The Bible is full and live and pretty funny sometimes, too. So <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Give it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So oftentimes we joke around as staff and we're like, you know, I'm impact, you're impact, we're impact. <laughs> but we oftentimes say is like, if impact stands for involving many people and creating teamwork, this is teamwork. It takes like all of us to take the gospel where maybe we can't go, right? Um, so we just seriously, like Becky and all of us said, we just want to say thank you so much for allowing us to be a part of your family, but you're a part of our family too, so we love you all. Thank you so much. Go anywhere. I wanna pray over you guys. Uh, a couple people come up. I wanna lay hands on them real quick. Whoever is willing to come on up. I just thrown this out there. Come on, don't be shy. The Lord loves everyone. There we go, thank you. I don't know why they gave me this today. I am not musical. Yeah, all right, ready? All right, everybody touch somebody. All right. Father God, we just, we thank you for the call, Lord. It is not an easy call at times. And Lord, the places that they go and the people that they talk with aren't always receptive, Father God. They come from all around the nations, and your word says that we are to bring it to the nations. And Lord, right now you're bringing the nations to them. So encourage them through this time. Give them rest during this holiday season, Father God. Let them come close to you again, Lord. You speak your words into them. Give, show them your ways and not their ways. Show, give them wisdom beyond their years, Father God, to come and be creative to meet and introduce who Jesus is to the world, Father God. The message stays the same, Lord, but the way we present it, Lord. So give them this new creations of how to present it to a world that speaks many languages, that speaks Babel, Father God. Give them the wisdom and understanding, Lord. But watch over these babies that are in this ministry. Keep them safe because we're all your children. Oh, you didn't <laughs> like that, huh? Keep them safe. Watch over them. Let them be loved, Father God. Lord, we just give you the campuses in Illinois in Chicago, in all the states, Father God, but we give you, give you these children right here, Father God, to do a wonder for you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen? Amen. 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 I love you guys all. Man, you're a little feisty, huh? You want to come preach with me? That's awesome. Thank you guys for being a part of here. And that's the second time or third time you guys told me you guys have mentioned impact at a, at a staff meeting. That's too funny, man. Thank you guys. We love you. We truly do. Uh, Justin was our first Chi Alpha back five years ago that we picked up as a, as a, as a church to su support. And I try to pick up all the Chi Alpha. You guys got a special heart in my, or place in my heart because at that age, at the age you guys are touching people's lives, I was so screwed up that if somebody just maybe at that time grabbed me, Maybe I didn't have to go through everything that I did. I mean, I, there's a reason why I went through everything I did. I get it. But <clears throat> you never know, right? So you never know who needs that little touch. So uh, God bless you guys, and thank you for being with us. Hey, we are in the Christmas season, are we not? Yeah. Amen. And, 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 and we're starting our Christmas service today, or our series, and it's called The Christmas Presents, 12 Unique Christmas Gifts for You. It's week one. 
How many of you guys like receiving a gift? Who likes getting gifts? Who likes giving gifts? I like giving gifts. And see, that's the whole reason for the season, isn't it? Here during the Christmas season. And, and, and along with that comes a gift. But during this Christmas season, sometimes it's kind of hard to stay focused on the real, on what Christmas is about, isn't it? Think about it. Starting in November, what starts popping up all over the places? Ads, Christmas. It makes me sick. I, walk into, I walked into Home Depot in the beginning of November. I think it was like October 30-something. And I walked in, and they had Christmas stuff up already. And I love Christmas. Christmas is my favorite season. Like, I like giving gifts. You know, I love giving gifts. I love talking about Jesus. But I saw this Christmas stuff, and I was just like, yeah. Because we, we're missing Thanksgiving. See, we're missing the gratitude. Because that the gratitude brings in Christmas through remember, remembering who Christ was and what he did for us. But, but then we have Black, Ho Black Holiday. Wow. Black Friday, excuse me, Black Friday, Cyber Monday, Giving Tuesday, whatever all these are, right? And, and it starts taking the focus off of really what Christmas is about, doesn't it? And it starts telling us, oh, buy gifts, spend money. Buy gifts on people that don't, we don't like. Spend money on, no, I'm just kidding on that. Sometimes, though, you do. You spend money on things <clears throat> that you don't have money for, right? And that's what the world is telling us and showing us, go buy this, go buy that, you need this, you need that. Like we took the girls yesterday um, Christmas shopping to buy gifts for other people. And they're little, and guess what? Can I have that? Can I have that? I said, now it's time to go. <laughs> I'm like, nope, you can't. It's time, instead of saying no, I'm, okay, it's time to leave, right? Because that's all we see. And it's the first thing you see. But, like I said, the Christmas season, it is about getting a gift, a, a, a true gift, one that we don't deserve. And that, so during the next three weeks, we're going to talk about this. We're going to, the goal is to help us stay focused on the real meaning of Christmas and, and to stay focused on his presence, Jesus' presence, Jesus during the Christmas season, right? There's no, without Christ, there is no miss. There's no Christmas without Christ, right? So without, and so I, what the goal is, I want each of us to realize the presence that God has given us to be able to stay in his presence. All right, so we're going to look at 12 unique gifts, Christmas gifts, that our Savior has given us through his death and resurrection. Amen? Let's pray real quick. Father God, as we go into your word, Father God, not Pastor Anthony's word, but your word, the Bible, Father God, I ask that Becky said it earlier, it's alive, Lord. Make it alive in our hearts today, Father God. Open up our eyes to see the truth. Open up our ears to hear the truth. Open up our hearts for transformation, Father God. We love you. We give you this time. And Lord, just do a miracle here today. In Jesus' name, amen. So the first gift is actually really easy. Everybody should know the first gift. Anybody? Well, no, but that's good. Where does salvation come from? Jesus! The first gift was a Savior, right? We can't have salvation without the Savior, right? So the first gift is a Savior. Isaiah 9, 6 says, For a child is what? He is born to us. A son is what? Given to us. The government will rest on his shoulders, and he'll be called Wonderful Counselor. Wonderful Counselor. Mighty God. Everlasting Father. Prince of Peace. Amen? See, over, amen. Over 2,000 years ago, we received this most precious gift, right? A woman called Mary was sent a, a messenger by the name of Gabriel, and, and to, they, she was going to have birth and give birth to a son. Not naturally give birth to him either. The Holy Spirit was going to indwell her and, and, and give us, impregnate her and give us the Savior. Amen? And she was supposed to name him Jesus. And that, and Jesus, Emmanuel, means God with us, right? That meaning God is going to come down from heaven and be with us in human form. Now, something we don't deserve, he, he's, if I'm a king and I'm sitting on a throne and I can rule everything from a distance, from afar, do, why do I want to get sloppy and be with the people? I have other people to do that, right? I have minions, right? Did you ever watch Minions? Drew, right? 
Why do I want to get dirty with them? But see, that's the thing. Our Savior loves us so much that he did come down. And he did it. He did stand with us. And he walked with us. Amen? And because of this, he grew like us. He bled like us. He lived like us. And he paid the ultimate price for us. One that we can't, didn't deserve, like I said. One that we, didn't, we couldn't even fathom how great the pain and suffering that he was going to have for us. See, during the Christmas season, we always picture Jesus as just a baby. Jesus was a baby for a year. Then he was a toddler. Then he was a, probably a really rambunctious little kid because he got to play with tools. So he was probably hitting Joseph all the time and hammering, right? So you know that, right? You, your hus husband's a carpenter. Joy probably takes the stuff and makes a mess with it. And Matt goes, oh, what are you doing? Right? And then Jesus turned into a teenager. But when he went into ministry, he was a man. And he had one purpose, to be the Savior. Knowing that he was going to die for us. Imagine that, knowing your true purpose in life. And he knew it. We know, and, the, and the beauty of the, what he did for us, we know a lot. By him taking away our sins and being our Savior, we don't have to live in condemnation anymore. We don't have to live in guilt anymore. How many of you live in guilt? And you don't have to, great. If you want, go ahead. Cool. But so many of us live in guilt. We live in the past. We live in shame of things we've done. That's the past, man. You got to get past the past. You got to stop thinking over it. Learn from it. Learn from the past, but don't live in the past. That's why he's back there. You got a whole future in front of you, amen? Because of that, and because of what he's done for us, he built a relationship with us. And this is the difference in the Old Testament and New Testament to me. The Old Testament, they didn't realize that they could speak to God. They were afraid of him because when he was on the mountain with Moses, they said, oh, he's making loud noises and lightning, and I don't want to, dude, that would have been the best storm you got to watch in your whole life and they shied away from it. Man, who likes watching lightning and ah, that's so cool. And no, oh, they don't want to talk. So they shy. I don't want to talk to him. You 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 be my intermediate for me. And the whole time through the whole testament, they think about it. There were people that were blessed with the Holy Spirit. They talked with God. And we all could have. But this relationship when the Savior came and did what he did he broke that, and, and now we could have that relationship, every single one of us, and not having to go through a lamb sacrifice, or to a mountain, or to, we could have him anywhere we want to go, amen? We, and see, we no longer have to live in guilt, the shame, the condemnation, because Jesus took that weight and put it on the cross for us, and he died on the cross for us, right? Now we get to live in freedom. I like living in freedom. I've had lots of chains and boundaries on me, man. And I don't like people telling me what to do. I don't. I don't. I like living in freedom. But I don't mind the Lord speaking to me and correcting me. I'm not living in bondage with him. He's just trying to make me the man that I'm supposed to be for him. Amen? So Christmas is a celebration of the birth of our Savior. Celebration of all that he did for us. Right? Today I want you to take some time when you leave here today and, and right now, and I want you to reflect on that wonderful gift of a Savior that he sent to you. Spend time in his presence. Allow the Holy Spirit to minister to you today. How many in this room do I send text messages to every morning? If, you, if I don't, it's because I either don't have your phone number or you don't have a, a phone that gets a text message. That, I, there's a reason. It didn't start, raise your hands again. It did not start with this many people. It didn't. It started with a couple people, and then every time I text somebody, somebody else would text me, the Lord would say, send him a text. So I started sending that person a text. I started sending that. My list is now like, it, it takes me a while to do it in the morning. <laughs> it didn't take a while. But I want you to get into his presence before you get into the presence. Because the day is going to throw all the stuff. And when we don't get into his presence first, guess what happens to our day? When we don't realize that the Savior is with us, our day gets a little crazy, doesn't it? It truly does. So the second gift. So that's go. 
Uh, hey, look at that. Boom. I want you to get in the, in the presence of the Lord. I want you to spend time with him and let the Holy Spirit work on you. The second gift, though, is peace. Peace. See, Christ, or Christmas is a celebration of peace, of the peace that God brought into the world by, through Jesus Christ. He's the ultimate peacemaker for us. We no longer have to, like I said, live your life in this. I mean, you don't have to live your life in darkness anymore and crazy and chaotic uh, chaos. You, he brings this peace, this fullness into your life. That's truly what, when we say shalom and, and, and by, thank you for your Bible project, like that it was in my sermon already. And you said, so Jackie, not Jackie, Anna sent me on Friday, I think it was, the Bible project, I sent her something about peace, and she's like, I just read this and watched this, and, and it was exactly what I was going to talk about, and I, that word peace is shalom, it's the wholeness of God, it's the fullness of him, we'll talk about more about that in a minute, there's a verse though in Philippians, how do I know that we can live with this peace, like I said, Paul wrote this, it says, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your mind in Christ Jesus. Amen? Okay, y'all said amen to that, but do you really grasp that? Do you really honestly grasp it? Because we live in chaos at times, and you let that chaos dictate the way you live at times. And I'm, I'm to their fault at this at times, but what does that really, under, if you, you gotta really understand this. And the question I asked myself many times until one time, it just hit me like a, a storm. It was the first time I got pancreatitis. I was at home by myself. I didn't know what was happening. My body was shutting down. The pain was so bad. I was keeled over just like, oh my gosh, what am I gonna do at work? I have, I have a car and I'm like, I'll drive myself to the hospital. I could barely walk. I get to the hospital, they don't know what's going on. They're checking me for all kinds of stuff. Didn't think to check for pancreatitis. And I'm freaking out by myself. And all of a sudden, they're gonna go, gonna test on me. And I'm thinking, my wife's at work, my family doesn't know where I'm at. My church knew because I texted them and got a hold of them. So they knew to con you know, my wife finally found out, but they're gonna send me into this procedure to check what's going on, and I and I'm sitting here in pain. And I'm at LaGrange Hospital, and all of a sudden they take me down an elevator. And there's a, on the wall, literally on the wall when I came out of the hospital elevator, they said, be still and know that I am God. And I looked at that, and that's the first time I truly understood this piece of my life. Because it says the peace of God which surpasses all understanding. As a human, I'm thinking and freaking out. Oh my gosh, what's happening? Am I dying? I got a family. All these things. Why is my body acting like this? They can't figure it out. But as soon as I saw that, this calmness, not logical calmness, because they all looked at me and they're like, you okay? I'm like, I'm fine. I'm going to be fine. They're like, you sure? I'm like, yeah, I'm in a lot of pain, but I'm going to be fine. The Lord's got this. And they're like, okay, because I stopped freaking out. Like I, and I just became this calmness. And I, I can't explain it until you go through that calmness, until you go through that peace. Because like I said, I cried out, and sure enough, the Lord comforted me right there. The Holy Spirit just laid his hand on me and said, you're good, brother. So like now when I get sick and I don't feel good, I don't freak out about it. I'm just like, whatever. God will take care of it. <laughs> I might be feeling this way, but whatever. I can't do nothing about it, right? That peace, it can last in your life through every situation though not just when i'm sick not just when you're at the lowest of lows they're the best of the best he's there with you every day surpasses our train of thought our logical way of thinking does that make sense and that word shalom that word peace like i said it means wholeness and when he gives you that wholeness when he gives you that peace he truly makes you whole. So I have an example up here. It won't be on the screen. I've got four boxes up here, and I want to show you what I mean by wholeness. If I take away a box, a 
and there's four. Does that make it whole? No, I, don't, I have one quarter of it, or one fourth of it in my hand. There's three fourths. To have wholeness, I need to have all four. So if I give this to Taylor, open this when you get home. Sure gift. I, 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 if you guys didn't read my, my text messages and my invitation to everybody, it said four people will get a gift every week for the next four weeks. But if you're not here, guess what? You don't get your gift. I'm not saying all you're going to get a gift. These are the four people that God put on my heart this week to give a gift to. So you, you have a quarter of me right now. Bobby Jean, if I give you a box, come here. You don't want it, I'll keep it. If I give Bobby Jean a box, and now I only have two up here, I have half of me gone. Am I right? You can, that's yours. Merry Christmas. Open it later. I have only half of me up here, don't I? Pat, come here. If I give Pat a box of me, give Pat a part of me, Merry Christmas. Now I only have a quarter of me left, don't I? Joanne, Merry Christmas. I love you. <laughs> I don't know what she's going to say. Okay. No. Yes, I know. It was me and Ma talk about that a lot. She's a Spanish. Not Spanish. I didn't mean to. I meant to say random. I never know what's going to come out of her mouth. So I got I to gotta censor her at times. But it's, no. I'm, so now I have nothing. Now my life is a little crazy, ain't it? But if I bring those all back together again, I have fullness. I have peace. I have the shalom of God in my life. Amen? So I'm whole then. See, I wanted to give you a part of me today. Because God's got me whole. And I want you to be whole and I want you to feel his presence during this Christmas time. Amen? Does that make sense? That wholeness? See, I'm sure you can think of a, at least one situation that you've been stressed out in, that you've been hurt, that you're old. Maybe it's right now. You're going through something right now. I know a bunch of the coyotes, you guys are out planning out the rest of the, the month. And it's probably planned, but it's stressful. It's like, oh, my gosh, how are we going to reach these kids before they leave? We want to make sure they stay in Christ. Da, 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 da. Right? It's crazy. But you guys got to realize you have the same access, that same peace today. Not just today. You had it yesterday. You have it today. And you have it forever. We just need to stay in the presence. Next time it starts happening, I, I literally call out his name, Jesus. Because that's what I was doing on the elevator. Lord, you said you got my back. How do I know? And pff, there it is. His word's alive. It's as sharp as a double-edged sword, though, at times, too. But call out his name. Take a breath. Allow his presence to root deep inside of you, into your heart. Let the peace, let this, this is the peace promised to you to guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. Amen? And because he made a promise to us, he doesn't lie. It will never fail. Amen? So the third gift is forgiveness. Forgiveness. The third gift. Isaiah do you really know that you're forgiven? Well, we'll see. <clears throat> you're all going to hell. No, I'm just kidding. Isaiah 1, 18 says, Come now, let us settle this matter, says the Lord. Through your sin, though your sins look like, or though your sins are scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red as crimson, they shall be like wool. The scripture is really beautiful if you really take it to heart. Because it, it literally demonstrates what the Savior, Jesus, did. Because at that time, there were sacrifices, right? They were killing. There was blood everywhere. And that's what he's saying. Your sin is bloody. It's red. It's ugly looking. But the Savior forgave you, and he makes you white as snow. This is a, a cool little example me and my, my, my daughter came up with. Did you ever see one of these shirts? Yeah. 
yeah? yeah. All right, so it, it changes colors and all that stuff, and you can make it. Okay, so right now, right now, right? Do you, do you ever see one of these? Or you, right? It looks pretty ugly right now because it's got things going this way, that way, right? That's what our sin looks like. That's what your life looks like in sin. But pretty crazy looking, right? It's always up and down, your emotions. But what the scripture says is it washes it clean. It washes it clean. As white as snow, which we'll probably have very shortly, right? Nobody's looking forward to that. At least I'm, my wife said that yesterday. Oh, I can't wait for the snow. I hope we get a lot of it. <laughs> what are you nuts? Snow. But that's what he does. I know. That's what he does. In our dirtiness, in the bloodness, in the redness of our life, in the, the sinful areas of our life, he washes us clean and he allows us to smile. Micah said, Who is God like you? Who pardons, this is the beauty, who pardons sin and forgives the transgression of the remnant of his inheritance. You do not stay angry forever, but delight to show mercy. That's the beauty of the cross. He doesn't, he doesn't stay mad at us. He doesn't stay angry at us. He, he gives us mercy and he delights in mercy before us. You will again, you will again have compassion on us. You will tread our sins underfoot and hurl all our inequities into the depths of the sea. And that's what he does when he washes us clean. They're gone. He, the past is gone. The new is coming. See, God is the, the, the ex ultimate example of love and compassion and mercy and forgiveness. No matter how many times we sin against him, he's quick to forgive every single one of them. It's because, that's amazing. We're the ones that keep dwelling on it. He forgets it. I'm no good, I'm no good. No, yes you are. That's the devil talking to you. You're good. How do I know? Because God made you in his image. And he said, this is good. He didn't just say it once, he said it twice. This is very good. See, he doesn't make bad. We just want to be that way. Sometimes this amazing truth is hard to comprehend, though, because we do screw up so many times, right? But that's an incredible thing about God. He has no limits. In our mind, we have limits, and we limit ourselves. But our God is unfathomable, imaginable. You can't even imagine how great he loves you. See, over 2,000 years ago, a Savior was brought into the world to pay the price for our sin and mine and yours. Shame, guilt, condemnation, they no longer hold uh, a hold. They don't have a hold on us when we choose to live in the freedom of Jesus. Amen? Amen. If, there's a, if, if there's something in your life right now, because we're going to go into the time of communion in, in very shortly. I want, if there's something in your life that you have not given or taken to Jesus and put it at the feet of the cross, I will need you to do that today because we practice open communion here. And that means you, before you go to have the communion, you go give him your, your, your soul. You give him your heart. You give him your words. You ask for the forgiveness because that's what the cross did for us, forgave us. And when I say we practice open communion, if you are not a believer, no need to have communion with us if you don't know Christ. If you know Christ and you're from whatever denomination, I don't care less, and you believe that the Lord was born, raised, died, and I said it backwards, raised, and was born, you understand what I'm saying. If, 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 if you believe in Christ, you're more than welcome to have communion with us. And if you don't, we're going to give you an opportunity to believe in him, to call on him as your Savior. But we'll keep going to fourth. So to my, my, like you said, we, you, you have unrestricted access to the Heavenly Father who longs to walk with you, to be with you, God Emmanuel, right? Emmanuel, God with us, into the fullness of his grace, forgiveness, peace, and joy. So my other prayer and goal is that you spend time with him today and allow him to search your heart. I want him to do that right now. 
Let him search your heart. Let him reveal the areas of your life where you're not living in his fullness. I've talked about this many times in the last three or four months. Are you living up to God's great potential that he has for you? Allow him to gently work on those areas, because he will. Some areas he might throw you a brick at you because you've just been so stubborn to listen to him, and it happens. You're like, oh, man, that was a tidal wave, right? And then there's gentle areas that he keeps working on to bring you into this new season of healing and peace, because we all need that, don't we? The fourth gift, gift is love. The fourth gift is love. Christmas is truly a time of love, isn't it? It truly is. So we see it all around us. Starting with Thanksgiving, of everybody getting together, eating, hanging out, giving gifts, the meals, the time we spend together. See, without love, I'm sure you would agree Christmas just would not be Christmas, right? But where did the love come from? It came from God. God cho cho chooses to love us and gifted us with this love so that we could love others. 1 John 4.19 says, we love because he, loved, he first loved us. He first loved, how do I know that's true? Because John 3.16 says, for God so loved the world that he gave what? His one and only son, and whoever believes in him will have eternal life, will not perish in heaven. You know, that's probably the only Bible verse I've memorized. I'm not kidding. No, you guys laugh. Because it means that much to me. For some reason, it's truly stuck in my soul, and I can't get it out. Because he loved me when I was at the lowest part, point of my life, the biggest sinner, in, in, I think, in the world at that time. And he said, no, kid, I love you. He whispered in my ear, I love you. He literally, I remember it like it was yesterday, sitting in a dark auditorium because it was altar time and the lights got to be low and all this ambiance. And, I, and all I remember hearing is in the, a small whisper, you're forgiven. There's a gift. I love you. There's a gift. And the peace that came over me, there's the gift. And why? Because of my Savior. There's the gift. Do you know the gift like that? Do you know the Savior like that? Do you know the peace of love like that? Do you know the forgiveness that he has for you like that? Bow your heads real quick. Because I, 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 people get shy about this. I don't know why. See, the love has power to change lives. I want you to take a moment right now. If you're a believer, I want you to take a moment. And I want you to remember the first time you felt the love of God in your life. I just told you about mine. I want you to think about yours. Where was it? How did it make you feel? What happened? If you don't know the love of Christ, if you don't lo know the, the peace of Christ, if you don't know that the forgiveness of what our Savior has done, today's your day. Today's your present day. Today's your gift. All you need to do is accept it. That's it, literally. Believe that he was born of a virgin. He died on a cross for us. He was buried and he rose again. To do what? To forgive our sins. Why? Because he loved us. And what comes with that love? The peace of Christ. If you don't know that and you want that today, and that's your, or maybe you have been a follower for years, amen. But you're just thinking, this ain't the right. I'm not standing in the right place. I don't, I still have shame. I still have guilt. If you need to recommit, you need to re-give. Hey, that's awesome. I want you to get your heart right because I, uh, because we're going to go into a time of communion in a minute. See, the, if that's you today, and we're going to pray a prayer in a second. The prayer does not save you. The prayer does not. It doesn't. It's your heart. God wants your heart. See, the love of God overpowers the weight of our sin and anything else that hinders us from living in his abundance. 
See, the love of God conquers every power of darkness that may come against us. When we stand firm in his love, we are unshakable. The devil shakes and his demons shake because we're unshakable. Knowing Jesus' love for us fills our lives with that freedom and that hope. We're called to share his love with others so that we may also experience the same freedom and hope. Amen. Keep your heads down and bow. Father God, I'm a sinner. But I believe that your son was born of a virgin. He died for my sins. He was buried and rose on the third day. And that he's forgiven and washed me clean. Lord, now I ask for another gift. Fill me with your spirit to lead me, to guide me, to love me, to walk with me all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen? amen. Come on now. Give him some praise. Come on now. We don't need to be quiet here. Don't need to be quiet in the house of the Lord. Think of where Jesus preached, man, on mountainsides. You think they were quiet? I've been watching The Chosen. We're going to go into time of communion. You guys get your elements ready. And, and, and it's, so, it's not like, it's not like everything's biblical in it. And, and that's, but it's the cool, it's how they do it and how, has anybody watched it? Okay, so it's cool, right? It's a, another take on what if Matthew and all these guys acted like this and they're trying to plan everything out, right? But that's what we do in life, right? But life is messy. And Jesus didn't mind that. Because if he did, he wouldn't have came down from the cross. Amen? See, Jesus ate. Yeah, see this bread? This, oh, do you have one? Do you want one? You got it? Okay. I don't want anybody to, to be left out. Because Jesus didn't leave anybody out. Jesus ate his last meal with a sinner, didn't he? He ate with 12 sinners. Just one acted on it really, really bad. But he took bread with all of them, with the clean, the unclean, with the paralyzed, with the, the, the prostitute at the well, with uh, people dwelled with demons. He sat with them and got messy. And at the last meal, he said, this is my body. Take it. And he gave thanks to God first and said, thank you, Lord. Take it. And he broke the bread and he gave it to his friends. Amen? Amen. And he said, and he, they drank wine at that time. The pastor doesn't drink wine. I took an oath I wouldn't drink wine. I used to. But he took wine. And it was red. And he said, this is a, a, the new covenant. And it was red for a reason. Because what was going to happen in a couple days, his blood was going to be shed once and for all. And he said, this is the new covenant that is going to save many. And that's what he's done here today. He has saved many. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. And they drank. And they drank. Do you want to sing? On your, your notes today is an application. And I want you to take it with you, and I want you to go do this. It says the Christmas, the, this Christmas, go share the gift of Jesus with someone that doesn't know him yet. Invite them over for food. Take them out for coffee. Leave, or leave them with the best book they'll ever read, the Bible. And if you ha did give your life to Christ today, and you said, I want him as my Lord and Savior, we have a Bible for you in the back. We have a bag, we have a reading plan, we have a gift for you to, to say, hey, you're, you're welcomed into the family. Let this Christmas be, the, be one of love and life, and life change. Not just for you, but for somebody else, amen? And that's why I love you guys so much at Chi Alpha. Because that's literally what you guys do. You have people in your house all the time. You have people at your house. You have small groups in your houses. You go have coffee with people. You guys are getting dirty with them knee to knee every day, every week, every month. It gets tiring. And it, it does. 
It takes us strength to go do it. And what did Jesus go do? He went and met. He was alone. Go be alone during this next couple weeks. Go spend time with him. Let him refresh you. Let him renew you. Let him restore you. Enjoy your family. Enjoy your friends. Connect with somebody you haven't talked to in ages that you I need to call that person. That goes for all of you. Amen? All right. I love you all.